Hello class, you're watching the group video project of David, J, Eric, and Eric. The point of this project was to take a mathematical idea and inquire about it. We'd find and observe ideas that were new to us and make conjectures and form proofs about said observations. The mathematical idea we chose was fractals and the Fibonacci series. Now, what is a fractal? As Mandelbrot describes, a fractal is a rough or fragmented geometric shape that can be subdivided in parts, each of which is, at least approximately, a reduced copy of the whole. More simply put, they are self-similar patterns. Here we have the example of the Mandelbrot set. While that Mandelbrot set was more chaotic, our group chose to stay with the simpler exact self-similarity, which is another type of fractal. This type of fractal is easier to draw and just happens to be what we stuck with. Here are some examples of these fractals. This example of a fractal is simply a triangle that is subdivided where the lines meet into three separate parts as shown. From there, we take each new triangle that we formed by dividing the triangle up earlier and do the same thing that we did with the original triangle, which was divide it into three other triangles and continue to do that until we can't anymore. Now, while the example I show um, doesn't actually go all the way into this process, it would normally go on for an infinite amount of lines until the original triangle that I drew would essentially be full. Now here's where our exploration starts. What we wanted to find was a connection between fractals and Fibonacci numbers. While our group was doing this exploration, David started to draw these sorts of shapes, which led our group to the beginning of our findings. It started with the simple square. David would draw a square and then draw another square at a 45 degree angle. David would continue to do this until he got enough squares where he physically could not draw anymore on the original sheet of paper. Now after he did this, David started shading them in in a very specific pattern as I'm showing now. What he found was what appeared to be a connection between shading these fractals and the Fibonacci sequence. This is where the group then tackled these findings. While we disproved his apparent conjecture, it moved our group forward to other results. Since we were looking to relate the Fibonacci sequence to fractals, one idea we looked into was finding a spiral inside of our figures. We noticed that when we drew self-similar figures inside of each other, individual triangles were formed. Using the triangles, we formed spirals that went one full time around. The first figure that we looked at was a triangle. When we completed the spiral in the triangle, there ended up being six triangles shaded in, which is not a Fibonacci number. From there, we looked at a square and found out that when the spiral was created, eight triangles were shaded in, and eight is a Fibonacci number, so a four-sided figure worked. After that, we continued to go up by one side, so the next figure we looked at was a pentagon. This figure ended up having ten triangles shaded in when the spiral was finished, but 10 is not a Fibonacci number, so the pentagon did not work. Still thinking that this could somehow work, we continued with this pattern and looked at a hexagon. We found that a complete spiral inside of a hexagon encompassed 12 triangles, which is also not a Fibonacci number. We still wanted to test other figures to make sure that the spiral found inside the fractals was not related to the Fibonacci sequence, so we tested an octagon and a nonagon. It turned out that the octagon only had 16 triangles and the nonagon had 18 triangles, and both numbers are not a part of the Fibonacci sequence. Although no connection to Fibonacci was found here, another pattern did surface. It turns out that each shape's number of triangles equals twice the number of sides it contains. Now that we have decided to stick with the exact similarity fractals, let's start with the simplest closed shape that I can think of that still has some number of sides. Here we have a triangle. Now for the purposes of this exploration, I will be measuring the side lengths and making calculations in terms of centimeters. However, what I will be looking for are relationships between different measurements in these fractals that resemble the Fibonacci sequence. So really, the size of the shape that I start with does not matter. After drawing the outside triangle, I can then draw the next biggest triangle that I can that still fits inside the outside triangle. Turns out that by doing so, the vertices of this new shape will always be located at the midpoints of the sides of the shape just outside of it. There also turns out to be a 45 degree rotation between the outside shape and the inside shape when I do this. Once I've done this enough to fill up the amount of paper that I have, I can start making measurements. Now, I purposely made the outside triangle have a base of 10 centimeters to make measurements relatively easy. This makes a perimeter of 30 centimeters. 
Using Pythagoras, I come up with a height of 8.66 centimeters and I calculated an area of 43.3 centimeters. Using these same techniques, the second triangle measured 15 centimeters, 4.33 centimeters, and 10.82 centimeters for the perimeter area and height. For the next triangle, these measurements became 7.5 centimeters, 2.17 centimeters, and 2.71 centimeters. And finally, perimeter, height, and area of the fourth triangle measured 3.75 centimeters, 1.08 centimeters, and 0.68 centimeters. Now my goal is to see if the differences between any of these numbers result in a sequence that resembles Fibonacci. However, I found that the perimeter and height of one triangle is always one half the perimeter and height of the one outside of it, and that the area of the triangle is always one fourth the area of the one outside of it. So, no Fibonacci yet. Let's give the square a try. Again, starting with a simple measurement, this time with 12 centimeters as the base, let's draw a large square and continue with the same type of fractal. By using the Pythagorean theorem and realizing that some sides of certain squares measure to be the same as other lengths from other squares, I can fill out the table of measurements just like last time. So again, we start with a big shape, now a pentagon, with a base of 8 centimeters, and we keep going until we can't anymore. This time I know that I'm looking for only the constants, and after using some law of signs, finding measurements of apothems and radii, I find that the constant I'm looking for regarding side length, perimeter, and height is 0.81. But again, I found that the perimeter, diagonal, height, and area always decrease by constant amount from one square to the next. Similarly, the constant regarding the area is 0.65. Adding these to the table, we can see that no form of Fibonacci exists. So, it looks like nothing really important happened. The most plausible contestant for a series of constants equaling the Fibonacci sequence is probably going to be the area, but the constants regarding the pentagon's area should have been 0.75 for this to work. No luck there. At this point though, someone might ask, what are you working on? Well, just for kicks and giggles, since this is too hard to explain, you might decide to just show the entire process with a new shape. Since we haven't done the hexagon yet, you start there. This time you don't waste your time drawing so many hexagons since you know you only need two to find your constants. You explain that you've been trying to see if the constants resulting from relationships of the measurements between these shapes can be compared to the constants from different shapes to resemble the Fibonacci sequence. After finding these constants, you add them to the table expecting to find nothing at all, but this time realize that the constants regarding your areas is 0.75 for the hexagon. If we skip the pentagon, the areas actually do resemble the Fibonacci sequence multiplied by one half. Maybe there is something here. Trying to make this work, we notice that the difference in number of the sides between a triangle and a square is 1, a Fibonacci number, and that the first two constants relating to Fibonacci numbers appear with these two shapes. The next constant resulting in Fibonacci number relates to the hexagon, which has two more sides in the last shape that had a connection. 2 is another Fibonacci number. You realize that to continue this new pattern, you need to use a shape that has three more sides than the hexagon or the nonagon. So we get to work and use the same methods as before. However, we find that the scalar regarding the areas of the nonagon is 0.88. The hexagon gave us false hope. However, after some quick thinking, you realize something that you maybe should have seen way sooner. There is no way this Fibonacci sequence can exist, just as there is no way the constants regarding the areas of nonagons could have equaled the desired 1.25. The reason for this is because the shape outside of it is confining the one inside. However, as we make our shape contain more and more sides, we find that the measurements begin to be closer and closer to the shape outside of it. So it would make sense that as the number of sides in our shape approaches infinity, the constants we are working with would approach 1. So unfortunately, we have no connection here. After a few days of finding no relationships, we decided we want to make this work. In this exploration, we started with the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Using a 1 by 1 square connected to another 1 by 1 square, then connecting a 2 by 2 square to match the previous two squares areas. As you grow the squares, the sequence follows the Fibonacci sequence. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on and so forth. By using the golden ratio, we have produced a figure of the following Fibonacci sequence. Now how does this relate to fractals? Our fractal is self-similar, in our case using squares. The problem between this relationship is making it infinitely complex. Yes, the example can go to infinity following the Fibonacci sequence as you zoom out from the shape, but when you zoom in from the shape, you do not follow the Fibonacci sequence. And the fractal does not continue, making it connected, self-similar shapes. By breaking this rule, the relationship cannot hold in this example. The example can be a part of a fractal by the side values of the shapes equaling the values of the Fibonacci sequence. This is the closest relationship we could find between two mathematical phenomena.